Good evening and welcome to the October 19th uh, MS 86 Board of Breakfast meeting. Uh, let us stand with for the Pledge of Allegiance. Please. session is a 21 minute session with each person having no longer than three minutes in which to make a statement but a second public input session may be held at the end of the meeting if allowed by the board chair each person will give their name address and reason for speaking public input is designated for district residents but the board chair may grant non-residents the opportunity to address the board Statements concerning subject matter that falls under the law regarding executive sessions, for example, matters involving personnel, cannot be made during public input. We, as a community, pledge to treat each other as we wish to be treated. We pledge to seek understanding when there may be disagreement. Regardless of outcomes or opinions, we pledge to move forward with respect. This is a time for comments as opposed to questions for the, to the board. Thank you. Uh, is there any public input at this point? My name's uh, Kenneth Dutch. I live in North Berwick. Uh, family's been here over 100 years. And I uh, know nobody in here knows me, but I was repaired somebody's car in here one time. <laughs> <laughs> I've been repairing cars for 40 some years. And um, the thing that's important to know is you people need some feedback. It's not good. And I want you to remember this tonight. Not in a sarcastic and a mean-spirited way, but it's getting more and more common to hear people say what a raw deal they felt they got out of noble school. And I, for one, at this time and convenience, know that my grandson has autism he does not need to be in the main student class because the first day he come home pretty much traumatized well, we didn't like that and my daughter-in-law was crying about the whole thing she's i can't get anywhere with the school board here. and i said well i'm going down and let them know probably none of you people know about it probably didn't even bother to keep record of it but you know when it's all put in perspective you people essentially are an employee of us taxpayers. I'm your employer. And I'm not trying to speak down to you because you're all wonderful people. And it's upsetting to hear so many complaints because I get business from Berwick, Lebanon, and North Berwick, and they got children. And those children are getting kind of a raw deal because they feel as though that they're really not up to standard. And I'm not going to ask questions because this is not the time to do it, but um, you need feedback from a person like you who has a business. I mean, I'm not one who uh, doesn't come in contact. They come in contact with me. And I had identified an incident that happened last year where my grandson, he was uh, junior, and uh, his name was Adam Dutch. Now, Adam's a pretty good-sized boy, and he wasn't going to put up with bullying. And he told me some of the bullying that goes on, and we're concerned about how this is getting out of hand. He was actually over a girlfriend that belonged to this other kid, come out with a knife. He took the knife away. My grandson got ejected. And my daughter-in-law was so mad that I had to calm her down. So probably none of you people, they probably kept that under the table. But... Uh, it was very, very disgusting. And, you know, when I, I think about 
all the stuff that goes on. What about the rest of the stuff we never hear about? But we get wonderful buildings, we pay big taxes, and I know you people making excellent salaries, but uh, I, I'd like you people to get together and see if you can't resolve this whole thing about the bullying factor. And I know when my grandson was with 13 year olds, I was a 13 year old one time myself, and I was a hellraiser. <laughs> they probably still are, and even worse. He was under a bad influence. So he was what you call raw meat for a predator. And he come home and I know for a fact, he said, I can't, I, I can't live with these boys. And I said to him, I said, uh, Ben, we're gonna try and get you in a special ed. And I don't know why in the world he was stuck in there with those mean spirited kids because I was 13 years old too myself. Sir? Sir, can I just, I hate to interrupt, but it's, My time's up. Okay. it's been three minutes. I'll give you like 20 more seconds, but I, well, I, I, I think but you got the general you. idea. Yes. Mm -hmm. Am yeah. I right or am I wrong? You got it. Yeah. Well, that's why I come tonight. Thank you. Any other questions? I'm actually reading this on behalf of somebody else. Um, it was dated October 16, 2023. Dear Superintendent Bove, Assistant Superintendent Austin, and MSAD 60 board members, I am Jeremy Caston, a Berwick res resident and parent of three children in MSAD 60, two of whom are XL identified, the other is in kindergarten. One of my fellow parents will be reading this letter for me as I am helping out DCM running the live broadcast of the planning board meeting. My wife is coaching youth soccer tonight. However, the school board is top of mind and wanted to share an update. When I spoke over the summer, I promised I would remain involved. To be honest, my middle child has had a difficult time. He adores his teacher and has always been thr thrilled by learning and reading and stretching his mind. However, after starting at Knowlton this year, he has been miserable. He didn't want to go to school. He was having a hard time regulating emotions and had, he started showing signs of depression. He was suddenly not the vivacious nine-year-old we all know. He started to tell us he didn't like school and this raised alarm bells. When I contacted his teacher, the XL teachers and director and others at Knowlton, MSAD's team went into action. We scheduled a meeting with Mrs. Bowie Ms. Mossman, Mrs. Zahagan, Mrs. LaFrance, Ms. McDougall, and Principal Keniston. We discussed that this is a fairly common occurrence with XL students and we learned of ways the XL program meets these needs and difficulties. Because our son had been working with Mrs. Zahagan at Hussey School for many years, she could speak to his specific needs and how we might get him back on track. In fact, helpful suggestions were made by all and we formulated a plan. We are just two weeks into this plan, but it has been successful so far. We are so grateful. We are especially grateful for having a great Excel director in Mrs. Bowie, who has been, who was able to help to streamline and plan during our son's difficult transition between schools. Most importantly, we didn't lose a fourth grader who loves learning to the notion that he didn't like school. We had a team in place that had been working with him since kindergarten and in a short time started to reverse his experience. Thank you for valuing the individual needs of all children. It is working. Jeremy Caston. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Mark Roulard, uh, 62 Oakwoods Road, uh, North Charlotte. I ran for State House Rep. Um, last term, and I went out and talked, knocked on a lot of doors, and talked to a lot of people. I was astonished to find out how many people have pulled their kids out of school and now homeschooling. I know you've mentioned you lost a lot of kids. What are the number of kids have you lost through your school district? Is that something you could answer for me later? Okay, later yes. Thank you. Yeah. Any other public input? Uh, and let us now take a look at the minutes of September the September 21st meeting. Uh, 
the motion to approve the minutes from the September 21st meeting. Anyone second? I'll second. All in favor? Any abstentions? Right. So we have one. Uh, and we'll move on to the uh, minutes of the October 5th meeting. I have, a, I have a correction because we had someone run the meeting because of the absence of our chair and our vice chair. And it's not noted in here that we had someone. Okay. Yeah. I believe it was Kathleen. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, just to make a note on this, um, Kathleen was just kind of put in there. We should have voted on that. We should have had a nomination and a vote on that as well. And we did not, but maybe next time if that should happen again. Thank you. Anything else? Anything else? <coughs> I'll make a motion to approve <laughs> the October 5th um, meeting minutes. Second. I can't second. I wasn't there. I wasn't there. I can't second. <laughs> I'll second. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I was watching your edit. Uh, all those in favor? Mm -hmm. Do we have enough? One other thing, sorry, I had to catch, I had to catch it. That's okay, it. So sorry. In where we're talking about, I'm sorry, it's, it's just, uh, the assembly, mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. Josh Tabor had a few comments. Mm -hmm. um, Shared his thoughts about MSBA organization and that it is not necessarily in favor of allowing them to reflect his own thinking. I think it had a little bit more involved in it, so um, because he talked about what the organization actually was. Okay. So can we add that back in? What it actually is, what it does, because that was kind of explained to us. Yep. Um, Thank you. And down below it says MSBA currently represents school boards at the state level. What else? Would but what, you like it, in? what it does at the state level? What is it doing? I mean, okay. What, it, what is it doing? Yep. And why we need someone to go there if, because oh. I know it's not absolutely something we have to do, but right. why we should have somebody going there. Okay. Like proposing legislation. Excuse me? Like proposing legislation and that kind of stuff. That kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What, they're, what they're doing. Because yeah. I know we talked about that and I think it's just important. So, so sorry about that. I think yes. Okay. We need to accept them as amended. Accept yeah. the October 5th minute as amended. Okay. I'll second. Okay. Second. All in favor? Anything else? Anything else? Okay. Um, second. All in favor? And abstain. Okay. Okay. Do abstain just for Yeah. Thank you. Uh, moving on. Positive behavioral intervention and supports. So, uh, I'm Michelle Keniston, principal of Milton School, um, and this is Missy Royce. Um, she is our behavior interventionist, and we were asked to share kind of a, just a little bit of the journey that Knowlton started about a year and a half ago now um, with the, um, the State of Maine Department of Education and the University of Maine system. Um, it's called PBIS and we are part of a three-year cohort. So we, it's grant funded, we apply to the PBIS cohort. Um, Knowlton School joined last year and our other elementary schools have joined this year. So, okay. So um, this is the Department of Aid, and, and this is what we're what we're working on. Um, so we just wanted to let you know kind of what this is. What it is not is a program. What it is is a framework of. Excuse me. Pause for you. So being part of this cohort, we put together a PBIS team in the school, um, and 
joined schools from all over the state. So our cohort has um, schools from as far as Fort Kent. Yes. Um, we have met lots of uh, folks from a place called Appleton that I had a chance to visit this summer. Didn't know there was an Appleton name. That was exciting. Um, and we started getting together with these trainers um, from the Department of Ed and USM. And they really have helped lead us through the steps to create a system for ourselves um, with this in mind as a goal. So, as I said, it's a framework um, for implementation of a whole variety of interventions and various levels of interventions. Um, for academically, behaviorally important outcomes for all students. So we're really talking about every single kid in our school and ultimately in our district. Um, so we talk a lot about PBIS as being not something on the plate for teachers, but the plate. So as you walked around the school, you probably saw lots of things that said rise on them in various places. You, if you looked at our, you know, went to go into our bathroom, there's suddenly a sign that's telling you how to appropriately use the bathroom. Um, if you go into the cafeteria, you will see that. Um, it's really about making sure that we are supporting all of the students, um, improving classroom school climate, integrating academics and behavioral initiatives, because certainly we know that um, behavior doesn't, isn't just one thing, right? We have lots of things that play into that, and it can affect academics, and how students feel about their academics can play on the behavior in class as well. So the goal is to, have, <coughs> obviously, we're always thinking about maximizing academic achievement, and decreasing the need for that restrictive management piece. So, if you, oh, where's the rest of it? Oh, it's, oh, it's, it's coming. Piece. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> piece. I was like, there's my problem. So if you have been around in education uh, uh, lately, we are always talking about this like pyramid, right? And so we have kind of what we do for all students down here, and then, um, so in this kind of what we're doing for all students, we're thinking about building a system that works for all students. Um, so we want to have school-wide systems that work. And uh, one of the big pieces with this too is we want to be proactive versus reactive. So we want to make sure that we've clearly taught the expectations. When you're in the cafeteria, we want to make sure that we've clearly taught what's expected of you, what voice volume, that you stay in your seat, that if you need something, raise your hand, because we want to hold the students accountable, but if they don't know, then they're going to, you know, but if they've been clearly taught. So one of the big projects we did over last year in the summer was make some lesson plans that every classroom teacher taught the first couple weeks of school for expectations in the cafeteria, the restrooms, the hallways, on the bus, and we've just Playground. seen some playground, and we've seen some really great things with that. So along this journey, we're also thinking, we're thinking about what do we need to do for everyone, but and then also building systems for students who need more support as we go as well. So we're gonna give you, we'll give you some examples of that. And then there are some students who are gonna need some more intensive support. So how do we make sure we have that in place? And of course, you know, <coughs> thinking that sometimes we're going to be up here and then we're going to come back down again. Just providing that intensive support for just the time it's needed and then releasing from that. And so this is a, we're kind of where we want the sweet spot to be that we're looking for. 80% of the students will mostly, we know, will be following. And then some, maybe 15% may need a little bit more help, 5%. So we're looking to reach that 100%. But we also know that it looks like some people may at one point be doing great, may need a little bit of help, some reteaching, some examples, some small groups, and then they're right back into just knowing what to do each and every day. So 
these have been our steps. Um, we developed a team. We have a great team here at school that's worked really hard. Um, developing a purpose statement, identifying school-wide behavior expectations. Um, this took a long time to really drill down at making sure that all of us understand what is expected at all times in every location. Um, you wouldn't believe how many conversations it takes to really drill down to, well, what are the recess boundaries? And like, is this really the boundary? What if a ball goes here? And you know, just takes a lot. Um, and one of the things that I think also helped us, or that I feel helped us, um, was the collaboration amongst the whole staff. We would come with them from the team saying, here's some things that we feel is important. What do we all feel? And we would spend a staff meeting, you know, 20 minutes of it, talking about it, and really working together so it's agreed upon the whole school. All the staff is like, yep, we agree, we like this. We, we're going to, you know, we're going to encourage this. Um, and exactly how we're going to say it to students, too, because language matters. Um, so we've developed our school-wide expectations. We developed procedures and, exp and lesson plans on how to teach this. Um, we require this to be taught throughout the first weeks of school. Like, that was a non-negotiable. We will teach students how to um, sit in the cafeteria. We will teach students how to walk in the halls. Everything was taught. Nothing was expected. Um, so, let's see. Um, certainly, we've got... A continuum of different um, interventions that we've put in. We are down right now to using data for decision making. We have developed a we not developed. We have purchased um, Swiss. It's a system that we input all behavioral data and we can drill down into um, what is our spiciest spot in the school. Like oh the hallways on Tuesday afternoons are looking a little spicy. Like, what can we do, what can we put into place to quiet that down? Um, so we can filter by location, we can filter by uh, a behavior, a time of day. Um, interestingly, right now, Tuesdays, we don't know why yet, but Missy and I were just looking at the data, and like, what's happening on Tuesday? So just being able to ask those questions and look at, at data and not just say, oh, you know, this felt like a hard day. And so then we can also target and say, all right, staff, can we take 15 minutes and just review and repeat the expectations in the hall, the expectations mm -hmm. in the cafeteria to make sure that everyone's understanding. Um, and also with the um, developing the continuum of the strength and with the expectations, it's wordy. Um, we've also done part of the incentives, and some of you in the office might have seen the big jugs with the coins if you walk by. <coughs> so what we do is students are able to earn a coin if a staff member sees them showing integrity. So RISE stands for Respect, Integrity, Safety, and Empathy. Those are what we've decided our core values here at Milton are. And so if we see a student helping another student, we can say, hey, you know, thank you. That was showing real empathy when they drop their books and you help them pick them up. Thank you. And they go in their classroom and they pop it in their classroom jar. When their classroom jar fills, they um, have decided on a classroom incentive or reward. It would be a pajama day, an extra recess. Um, anything but a backpack day seems to be very popular right now. Um, and then they take the full jar, go into the office, and empty it into their recess container. And so that's three or four classes that are working together to earn an extra 15 minute recess. When that gets filled, we have another big container where they dump it in so that when it, that's filled, it's a school wide. So it's not only an individual incentive, it's also community for our school. So this is kind of the, the um, research from PBIS. This is our, this is the, the why. And here's what it looks like on the ground here. So here, this is some of the work we've done. 
So when we talk about expectations, this is, we call it our matrix. These are all of the um, expectations for bathroom, hallway, cafeteria, playground, assembly, and bus. And we talk about it in terms of we have integrity when we take responsibility for our actions. Um, we have integrity when we ask for help when needed. And these are the, the words that we all use with students all the time. What was that? Too? Sorry, are we good? <laughs> <laughs> um, but like I said, a lot of this is about building the system. It's not really about the coins, it's about building the system. So one of the things that we had to do is really think about our school and behavior and what behaviors were going to be staff managed and what was going to be administration managed and how was that going to go and kind of make that obvious and transparent to all of our staff. And you can see like sometimes disruption is managed by staff but sometimes disruption is really big and that needs to go to administration. So there's kind of this, sometimes people think that, you know, PBIS is, is all positive and there is no consequence. We really want to be explicit in that we are trying our best to teach, reteach, um, to re reward, and when things go wrong, we have a plan. We developed our own referral sheet that goes along with um, our whole plan. So this is what gets inputted. We have kind of student data up here, locations, that's how we track by locations, whether it was staff managed, administration managed. We also think about what the motivation of the behavior is. And this is important when we get multiple referrals on a particular student. Like, are they looking to get peer attention, adult attention, a thing? Are they looking to avoid adult attention, peer attention, or an item an activity? Um, so really trying to think about what is the root of behavior. Um, these are various actions that could be taken, time out, recess, conference with student, loss of privileges, parent contact, individualized instruction. So thinking about what is the lagging skill that could you know, was the, could have been the cause, in-school suspension, modified recess, restorative practice, um, and then others involved. And so a staff member might fill this out, put it in a lease and I's box. We either, if it's this, we just input the data. If it's administration, administration managed, then we know that we have an action step. Here's some kids. <laughs> Hi, my name is Alex. And my name is May. Hi, my name is Riley. And my name is Kelsey. Today we're going to talk about rising at Knowlton. And we're going to talk about rise at Knowlton. Respect. Integrity. Safety. And empathy. The reason I, the reason why I feel safe because of rise is because I am focused. I feel safe because the teachers are around me and friends. Um, People include me, people be kind to me, and people care about me, and teachers help me when I need help. Because of RISE, we can have more fun in school, and we also have more activities that we can do to get the fun things done after we do our work. Rising also helps us work great together in, in groups and work groups. Because of RISE, we can get our work done and still have a lot of fun things to do afterwards. Also, when we rise, we make other students feel comfortable and happy. An ELK award is a special paper that you get for rising in the school. And it feels you should feel really proud of yourself, happy, and very excited. Because if it's your first ELK award, you should be very, very excited. I, want, I got an ELK award because I was rising and following class in, classroom and school. So these are coins that we get at our school for rising. When we rise, we can get these coins 
for example, being good in the cafeteria or walking in the hallway. The coins themselves are not the reward for rising. They're just a token of recognition so that you know that you've been a good student and you've been rising in the world. When we earn enough coins for rising, we can fill up our classroom jar and get a reward like extra recess or pajama day. Once we're done with that, we can empty our classroom jar and put it in a giant bin, which on Monday morning meetings, we can usually see how much progress we've made. And once that's filled up, we have a whole school activity. Thanks for watching. And have a great day. Thank, Thank you, you for, for watching. watching. We didn't write that script right now. <laughs> But that's what we would have written. If we did. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I don't know if the board has any questions for us. Yeah, yeah. I have questions. I, I always have lots of questions. Okay. Um, would you mind going back to like I think it was the third slide or so, second or third slide? It was where you were talking about academics, climate, culture, mm -hmm. um, the the kind of main goals. Or maybe like yeah. that's the one. Right? Yeah. So. Um, I, I always thought, I mean, as a, as a student, as a parent, um, and now as a board member, that maximizing academic achievement was our main goal. But here it says the main goal, typically this chart, the main goal is in the middle, um, supporting social emotional behavioral needs. So can you talk about sure. why it's arranged the way that it is? I don't think this is the main goal of education. This is like the goal of the PDIS. Okay. So our goal is always here. But there's a whole lot of stuff that gets in the way of that um, for the kid themselves, you know, if you're in a room that's that's got a lot going on and a lot of spice to it, it's really hard to to do your best work. Um, so, you know, really, when we think about PBIS, is we want we want the, the framework to do all of this so that the teachers and the students can do this. Okay. Along those lines, because um, you talked a lot about data and how you're collecting a lot of data. Mm -hmm. PBIS through Swiss, through yeah. things like that. Um, do you have data prior to PBIS that would be measuring the integration of uh, academic and behavior initiatives, the academic achievement of students for years, the reactive management, and the classroom and school climate? Do you have yeah. assessments on that so, prior to PBIS so that we can compare with people? Do you get on that? Yeah, I do. Like I, I do. Yeah. So we have, we're starting to do that. Um, the Swiss, we just came on board now. So. <coughs> Prior to this, I would keep a, like a Google form, right? And a kid comes into my office and I quickly enter. I don't have the level to drill down that I do now, um, but I'm anxious to see. So now, last year we were still really in a building phase. I'm anxious to see this year, how this year lines up to last year and the year before. Um, and then and we will have all the academic data. We do have a, would you wanna show our Part of this is that we are surveying students, teachers, and I families Alex. <laughs> twice a year. Um, so we do have some survey results. So, so this is, it's called a school climate survey. So we send this out two times a year, in the fall and the spring. Um, and to the families of, we sent out to the families of Milton and they were able just to go online and um, answer 20 some odd questions. Um, and these were just some of the results um, that we got from, because we did it last fall, spring, and then this fall. Yeah, um, so we did it in November, and then again in April, and then and again in October. Um, we were super excited to have more families respond this year. Did we, you do something different for that? I. They weren't we, getting 23 we, other notifications from the school probably, so they actually opened it. <laughs> we did. We had some very, we, we did target a little bit more. Um, and also I think parents were kind of expecting it because they had seen it last year. Mm -hmm. So they knew it was coming. So when they heard about this, um, they were like, oh yeah, we can, we can you know, yeah. we've done this before. And they realized that it wasn't going to take them an hour. It took about 10, 12 minutes. We have a, a teacher who can speak I to I was going to say also at Open House, you had the little, um, papers where the QR code, I think, could be scanned, so it was kind of more accessible to the families as well. So, I have a question. Um, so, do the, the, like we said, with the less participated, was it something where, um, do you show the parents the program that you're showing us, so that, like, at Open House, or give them um, knowledge so, of what you're doing? 
so far we're really trying. Um, I've brought some things to the PTO and, you know, like, here, look at what we're doing. Um, we've tried to send some things home to the families and, um, and get some feedback. We want, we were hoping to get some feedback over our uh, original matrix and we didn't have great participation in that. I, Elise and I stood at an open house and we're kind of begging for it, but um, people were like, that's great. Um, so what we have been trying to do is every family newsletter sticks something, some plug for this in, and we figure if you just keep putting it out there, um, eventually mm -hmm. we'll have some, some posts. You could. Being in our <coughs> second year and getting into it and getting mm -hmm. it, us, everybody getting used to it. And now the exciting part is that all the other elementary schools, so we're now a district team, so that's really amazing that all of the elementary schools are on, are doing the PBIS work. Are your framework, uh, what was it, the, um, the guide, what was it? The triangle? No, the grid. Matrix. The matrix, yes, matrix. our matrix. Yeah. So are your matrices, uh, across the district, are our matrices very similar, or do they differ? Because I'm thinking about our kids come from building to building to mm -hmm. building, it actually would be a district. If you, that did, so did you put our matrix, I think what you'll notice is if you look at that, it, it's what people would come up with mm -hmm. on their own um, if you're living in a school. So every school has something a little bit different here, but ultimately we're all looking for the same things. Um, so the other schools are in process of this um, because we're, you know, a year ahead. Yeah. Um, and they're going to lean heavily on. Yeah. 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 Let's be a dish. Let's yeah. for right? yeah. Yeah. Like, the, wheels. the rise piece here like is the Hussey Heroes. heroes. Yeah. At, yeah. So it's the H-E-R-O is a little different, mm -hmm. but really the same kind of a conversation. Mm -hmm. The yeah. most amazing thing has happened this week. Um, so busing is forever a tricky spot, right? We love our bus drivers, and they have the hardest job in the district. And um, Berwick buses, I think like all of them, are really full with one poor person who's trying to drive. Um, our bus drivers, this week I had, I got called out to a bus for them to tell me how wonderful <coughs> the fourth and fifth graders were doing. So I brought them all in and I swamped them with coins because and they were so excited. Um, and then today, I had a bus driver email me, bus 16, fourth and fifth graders are doing amazing. So I called them all down, and the kids were like, ah, it was 14, wasn't it? It was 14. It was 14, yeah. not 16. <laughs> they were like, I know why we're going down to the office. So they were super excited, and another bus driver from bus 19 came in to write an ELK award and ask for more points. So... So, so we're we're getting it out there. Um, we're really excited to be the the kind of lead school in this. Um, we've had a ton of buy-in and just a lot of um, motivated teachers to do this work, and it's been a ton of work. I appreciate your work. I think my, my biggest my biggest concern is that we do lack data prior to PBIS, and as a district, like I'm very uncomfortable <laughs> with that idea of not having data to be able to compare. Yeah. Um, in, in Apple's app, however way you, you collected it, I understand it's not the same, that is true, but what data do we, are we looking at to say that there was a clear need to, to do this? Because clearly we've used a lot of staff time, and if we, we consider, we should always consider, you know, finances. You start taking staff time, how much staff time we doubt, and then start doing dollars and cents in the amount of time we've been educating kids, and the grid work, I mean, you just, you take all that into consideration. It's a huge expense that we have, we have gone on. And as a taxpayer, my taxes not only pay MSA 60, it's the main department of education, right? The university system is supported by main department of education. This is a huge expense. It's and for us not to have, so there's, not I to have good data on behavior. I think there's a lot of data on the behavior. I, I would love to see it and I look yeah, forward to think about the, the referral program. Program. Like you, yeah. you sent us every the numbers of all the referrals yeah. from the prior year yeah. because we needed to see we needed data to support um the administrative team right mm -hmm. so we have that data it is not this it and it, so compared yeah, to it's not exactly. ready yet. Well, we have you but know, i would love to we see right, so we say, we say you know suspensions are going down okay what yeah, infractions exactly. back then mm -hmm. um merited a suspension yeah. what infractions now are meriting a suspension are we still suspending for the same behaviors or are we intervening differently at these behaviors like these questions 
You know, I hear from community members that kids have to walk out of a classroom because a kid is escalated. Well, that's lost instructional time for that period of time. Mm -hmm. I don't know how often that's happening. Is that just once? And I heard about that one story. Or does this happen more often? So it, I, I love that we're collecting data. Like, this is good stuff. I look forward to the future as a board member where we can look at all our buildings and we can see this data happening. We can see the number of times students are removed from a classroom because of an escalated student. We, we can see that data. And so I'm asking, I'm asking, yeah. you know, as, as a board, I, I think it's important. It's important for me to be able to, when community members come to me and say, you know, my kid is always having to be kicked out of the class because someone's, so to be able to say, you know what, I'm not seeing this. Like, I have the numbers in front of me, and I'm happy to share it with you. That's not the case. It, it empowers us to have those conversations. Right now, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm blind, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I, I think this is a lot like standardized testing changes. Mm -hmm. You can't compare them next to each other. But I do think anecdotally, we've heard some tonight, I hear it, I know, and those kinds of interruptions cost a ton of not just teacher resources and money to the district, but a lot of emotional damage to the kids that are impacted by those. I'm absolutely thrilled to see this, and I'm, I'm quite certain people could pull out some uh, intervention numbers and document that this is, is valuable, and eventually we will be able to look at it. Yeah, I mean, I have my referral numbers from last year. We have suspension numbers. We, we keep all of that, yeah. and we have to get it to, we have to. So. Yeah. I am very grateful for the time you've all put into this, because I do think good. that those good. issues, social-emotional issues, are really big interference in the ability to cover academic work effectively for a lot of Absolutely. Thank you. So who are you working with on the team for like the administrative piece of this that you brought together a team to kind of? So we have a, we have a school team. Our school team is uh, myself, mm -hmm. our assistant principal, Elise Felicia, mm -hmm. our school social worker, um, Missy Royce, our behavior interventionist. Uh, we have two classroom teachers, one fourth grade, one fifth grade, and a support staff member. Any parents? Not yet. Is that something maybe in the future? Have some parent input into that? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also have like a district team that is right oh. now um, heavy on the administrator side as we start to launch. Mm -hmm. Does that look like it's going to be parent involved and yeah, community involved? Yeah, it will be. Well. Right now we're just trying to get ourselves yeah. really no, I get. set. Yep. Okay, so this no software that you're using, <coughs> um, is this owned by the district? Or is it third party? It's, it's third party. Yeah, it's third party. And they signed yeah. a data privacy agreement. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's where you're going, but it is where I'm going. So are parents fully aware that this information is being tracked by a third party? That is not something that I've talked about with parents. Are student names in it? Yes. Not in data that. So it's it's. Various <coughs> levels, so I can see the student names when I put them in, um, but the data is aggregated without the student names, like when I look at the cafeteria, for, for example. So different people have different access, I guess is what I'm trying to say. If children's data is being tracked by a third party, mm -hmm. parents should be should fully be aware of that. Absolutely. Fully Absolutely. aware of that because but they I think for all the apps and everything they use for every single digital program that we utilize, parents don't think about that, and and that's that's a blind spot. Which is why we signed the data privacy agreement. Yeah. Would that be for the legal um, binding by the third party? The parents are the parents aware of that binding agreement? We publish the software that we that we use in our district. I don't know that that relates to your question. But. Because it's not every on technical campus or something like that, right? Yeah. Like all that stuff used to go into infinite campus. There was yes. a, a behavior whole section on, in infinite yes. campus. There's still yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, used. it's there, yeah. but it's who it gets access. Right. Mm -hmm. Parents have access to infinite campus. Mm -hmm. Right. Their own child. Yes. Yeah. 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 Nobody, yeah. 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 nobody else is going to say they're aware that their child is going to access the information. Well, uh, we've had infinite campus for a while. I wouldn't think most parents don't know. They've been paying attention to what's going on at school. They should know. They don't necessarily know that it's a third party that's maintaining the database. So somebody else has access. Somebody has the data with all of that child's information on it. And that stuff's not going away. 
didn't you say that not every that they can't necessarily see the names? Our teachers don't have access to Swift. Right. So I have access, Missy has access. I think Jerry's talking about the, the company the having access. access. Is that what the you're company, talking about? Right. You're talking about the company. Not, not only yeah. does yeah. the company have access, but unless they're not selling that information, and you have a guarantee that they're not selling that information, mm -hmm. there's a real risk to your child there. Well, that's what the, why that's we have what the, the state data, data Privacy Act protects from. Is mm -hmm. They're not selling? Data. Right, not selling data. Are they leasing it? No. Are they renting it? I would have to look at the agreement. That's not something I've ever asked. Yes, but the, those, those, words need, those words need to be in there. Because they, you can let, you can lease, you can rent, which are different, and you can sell. Thank you for your information. Presentation. Really welcome. Will we get a copy of the PowerPoint presentation? Yeah, I've already linked it into the minute document. And we will move on to the September financial summary. Thank you. So here's the hard copy going around. So we have a niche here. Okay. So you have a copy of the summary for September. Um, we the top section looks at uh, an overview of the revenue. You can see that we have collected 25% and have 75% remaining from both the towns and the state. Um, if you look below, it shows you what percent of the fiscal year we have completed. So we're right on track there. Most of our other revenue comes in later in the year, and it has to do with tuition for Mary Heard students that come into our district from other districts and things like that. Um, so revenue is looking right on, right on pace for us. Down in the expense categories, they are separated by budget category and we have what's been appropriated, what's been expended, meaning the checks have been written, what's encumbered, meaning we have put a reserve in the system. Most of that encumbrance has to do with salary and benefits, and it has to do with um, contracts or, or purchase orders that are out there from Amazon or whatever vendors we have. Um, the Um, at this point, through September, I really only have two areas that I'm paying more close attention than others. One is athletics transportation, and it, uh, if you followed us at all last year, you know that we are having trouble finding enough drivers, bus drivers, to get our athletic teams to their competition their way. Um, so we increased our budget from fiscal 23 to 24 to kind of... Um, tackle some of that expense. Um, currently, we've spent approximately 47.5% of our budget for fiscal 24. Um, we are always hopeful as the year goes on, and last year kind of showed it, that sometimes we are able to get some drivers to be able to take those runs. And we are also looking at alternates at every turn to try to see if there's another way, whether it's um, we have some vans in the district. Can we get a small group of kids somewhere with a, a non-CDL driver driving them? Um, so anyway, that's that's one area. The other area is electricity. <laughs> um, I know you all uh, have experienced some of this anyway. Um, electricity bills for us include some service charges, which are minimal. Um, generally, those are for the blinking lights that you see near the schools and things like that. You have delivery charges, which they assess based on kilowatt hour, how much electricity are you using, and supply charges, which are also based on kilowatt hour. Um, last year, we locked in a supply rate um, at 14.31 at cents per kilowatt hour. Um, compared to right now, the rate is 16.6 um, or 7, and is supposed to be going up to 25 and even 32 cents per kilowatt hour. 
in February, I think that 32 cents takes effect. Um, so, um, so that's one thing. So the supply side. So we're feeling good that having locked in, it is very much more expensive. Two years ago, we were paying six or seven cents a kilowatt hour. So we've doubled that cost in a couple of years, but we are locked in through November of 24. So in that time, we'll be exploring whatever options we might see and having some people um, help us try to navigate these waters. Um, the delivery side is where we are hitting a little bit of a speed bump. Um, we were notified on July 6th by a representative from CMP that they were raising our delivery rates by 42%. Um, let's see. They say it's largely based on the changes from LB 1711, which was a law put into place in 2019, which helped support solar and um, distributed, distributed energy and things like that. Uh, you're, you know, I would say if you're interested in it, you can go and Google that and because it's, um, co you know, I'm sure it's complex. Um, but the net result is based on our 23 usage. So I looked at last year's kilowatt usage, and I think this would mean an overage of somewhere in the neighborhood of $82,000. Um, two things that um, I'm looking at are, we have been doing lots of work with our HVAC systems in the district. You know, we went out for a bond for that and we have some of all of that work going on. In addition, we are doing lots of energy efficiency work. Um, they were in my office last week replacing switches with timers. So now all the lights in our office are on timers and go out when nobody's using them. Um, so there are lots of things we're doing to kind of combat the usage. Um, and while 82000 is a big number, we have spent through September of 23 about 14.43% of our budget compared to last year's 14.86. So we're about a half a percent more in usage than we were last year. So I am hopeful, again, this will play out over the year a little bit, but I'm hopeful that we will see some um, savings in both our usage and how we're using electricity. But it's just something to be aware of. What, what line is electricity? Is it um, maintenance? It's in the okay. maintenance budget. So we went from, we tried to anticipate because we saw how our supply rates were going. I think we were at 379000 for the district in, 20, in the 23 budget. And I think we're at like 518 for the 24 budget. So we'll probably be closer to 600000 Anybody have any questions beyond that? Or? Mine was just semantics of oh. debt service line. If it was zero and we haven't used any, have we expended a hundred or zero? Or have we? Oh, oh no. I have to say, wait. Yeah, I don't know. You're right. right. It's a complete semantics <laughs> question. It's not a you. You know nothing? It was just nothing? Yeah. Zero, zero, zero. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was like, well, we have one of them beyond. Yeah. Even if it's zero? Yep. Yeah. I'll <laughs> fix that. Complete semantics. <laughs> Okay. And maybe can we um, share this every month just so that we can um, just keep okay. everybody abreast on what we're doing as far as our um, financial summaries. Sure, sure. Thanks, Denise. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you. And I think the next one I'm just going to hang out to our sure. yeah. uh, Moving on uh, to technology lease approval. This is a hard, another hard copy. I know it was sent out as well, but I know that sometimes hard copies are easier to read. There is a motion on here once we get through the discussion. So this, um, we have um, Bridget is here from um, our technology department. Brett is here as well. And Denise is here. And we're just going to kind of go through this a little bit with you. But they're here to field any questions that may come up about this. So this was something that we budgeted. This was in our budget process last um, you know, our budget season, and um, as part of the approval of the budget, this this is part of that. So that's what we're looking at tonight. So this is really the um, resolution to authorize the lease purchase of technology equipment in, princi in the principal amount of $457,000. So 
So um, again, we talked about this as part of our budget um, moving ahead, and that was what we, we when we did the vote in um, the spring. So this is so, somewhat of an informal, yet formal, because we have to sign off on this and make a motion to accept. Um, but this is that follow-up from that vote. So I'll make a motion that the resolution entitled Resolution to Authorize Lease Purchase of Technology Equipment in Principal Amount of 450000 be adopted from in the adopted in form presented to this meeting. So is is this this is happening annually or is this something that we do every year or every three years? Like is this how long has this been going on? Okay, so um, a little I guess a little history. Uh, we prior pre COVID. We had gotten to a point where in our budget process, we budgeted for the amount we needed for technology purposes. And again, that's staff all the way through, staff benefits, equipment, everything. Um, if people in the classrooms, they, um, we budgeted in our budget. When COVID hit and we got all of these COVID funds and we needed to work remotely and have more software and all of that, what happened was we had so many funds available to us for the technology that we used those federal funds and we reduced our budgets so that the taxpayers weren't putting aside money for technology that really didn't need to be spent. So it was kind of an offset during COVID. What's happening now is we are transitioning off of those COVID funds and we are in that transition, we are trying to build up. So we are not able to put the full force of 457,000 in our budget at this point. This is a three year lease. So the payments will be 160,000 per year for three years. Um, and then during the budget cycle that we have coming up, we're going to, again, we're probably going to need a lease but we're hoping to step down off the leases and get back to a point where we're budgeting for the technology we need for the district. So, so, so this is this is the first time or the second time? This is the this? first time in okay. a lot of years. It's the first time. And you anticipate coming through this again? I anticipate, yes. There are at least a few more times to step down. Yes, again. right, and as, uh, we're hoping to step down. And then I guess my other question, obviously this just says generally um, equipment, right? Mm -hmm. Peripherals, accessory software, licenses. Um, has there been a discussion at the district level um, as, to, as to need? Are we just replacing devices? Are we eliminating devices that we don't need? I mean, I mean that's why Bridget and yeah. Bridget yeah. 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 yeah, we are, we are incredibly, yeah. incredibly mindful of our budgeting process. And I just started in this role last December. so. Um, I'm in really in my first year of building a budget. We took a, a very hard look at instructional software last year and made some significant cuts. Um, Brett has worked hard. Two hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. Um, Brett has um, <clears throat> over many years worked to build a device cycle that uh, allows our teachers and students to have current, well-functioning, not frustrating devices in their hands, um, and to really assess what is needful versus what is wanted an extra so we're community members and taxpayers too we want to be mindful about those things and brett can talk specifically to what the devices are in this lease if that's the kind of information that you want yeah i mean i, I am interested in that and uh and just i'm also mindful of i've read a lot about technology you know when it comes to younger kids mm -hmm. um, basically up to up to fifth grade um you know how much screen time do they really need and the research clearly says zero so we, I know we're using them in classroom. We need to do for testing and things like that. But um, you know, if the research says what's beneficial to an elementary kid is zero screen time, that's what's best. And we're using screen time, and we're paying for it. I have I have trouble wrestling with those two ideas, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so that's just that, that's what it says, right? So you know, if if that's what it says, maybe we shouldn't have them there, and that would be a huge savings to the district, I'm sure. But you guys know best. So I would like to hear about devices, and I'd also like to to comment back on on. on that information as far as screen time is not good for elementary kids at all. I'm not prepared with that kind of research today. Um, our, um, my philosophy around educational technology use is it's more about quality versus quantity. And um, I'm really invested in making sure we have quality resources and that the time spent on technology is quality. And it's not our primary educational tool. It is a tool that gives students access to information that is worldwide. And that kind of access is so empowering. Um, but I, 
agree that our time on devices should be mindful and should be related should be related to should be developmentally appropriate is what I want to say. The, the research I've found has been different, but I'm not prepared to address that today. So, but we can talk about the kind of devices we use and what specifically is on the lease. We have iPads, grades K through three, and which we have found to be extremely effective. And then Chromebooks, grades four through 12. And is, is, it, is it basically one-to-one? -one? I don't know. Yes. We are one-to-one -one K through 12. And you still feel that's necessary? I feel like it's best practice. Um, it has become best practice in the industry. It gives every child an equitable access to technology. Some have them in the home, some have multiple devices in the home, and some have none. So at least in the classroom, they're learning the skills that are socially uh, relevant and industry relevant, no matter which industry you're in. I know that, that kids pick it up, so it's not about the time at school again, which is why you want it to be educationally driven and mindful of and developmentally appropriate. And what grade level do students take devices home? Are they permitted to take devices home at some point? Not until grade eight. We used to do it. Four, five, six. Yeah, it, it used to be. We've pulled that back for various reasons. Repairs, mm -hmm. policies around homework, philosophical decisions. It's all those things that we talk about. It's a practice that we need to continually learn about, mm -hmm. discuss revise the research changes. We have more research now on kids using technology. It's, it's, we're in the middle of the game. Is this a, is this a time bound request as far as voting goes? Is this? Well, it is because we've actually, it's budgeted. It's in, we've already made the commitment. So yeah, we, we over budget and under budget lots of things too. So, I mean, I, I understand that point, but I also, electricity, I mean, we had to make changes and we might have to make more changes, right? Mm -hmm. We might be going over some areas and looking to go under in, in other areas, obviously. Um, you know, I, 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 I know I, I got some email this week and I was able to, to read it and so I had lots of questions, okay. so, right? Yeah. Um, you know, I'd like more time to consider the questions and, and, and consider more discussion before voting on it. That's my preference. I would, I'd make a motion to table it to our next meeting just so that we are able to do that. But if it's time bound, just in the future, can we be given something and not be given it, read it, discuss it, and not have to vote on it in the same meeting? I, I would appreciate that. So that, again, I, I'm able to be a good school board member, talk to community members, ask them what they're thinking about um, before reading it, asking questions here, and then voting on it. I just would like to know. These were, for, these were thoroughly vetted during our budget process. Yeah. So maybe, sorry, Denise can speak to the time-bound nature of this particular financial piece. Right. It, this is something we need to do tonight and sign off on it um, so that we are able to um, pro process the purchases we need and things like that. So this has to do with getting us the funding in a timely fashion so we can make the purchases we need. That were based on the budget that was based on the approved, budget. Right. Yes. And I'm just one parent, but with a second and third grader, second and third graders, they don't, I've, well, number one, from the COVID transition I've seen on hand the apps that the elementary kids are using what they're doing and the leaps and bounds that i've seen my kids make that i would not have expected them the things that they're doing i'm like when did you learn this in kindergarten um we definitely didn't um and my kids don't come home saying i spent all day on you know my ipad they come home and say like oh my gosh i just passed this level on lexia or something like that but there's you know the things they talk about that they're doing in their day it's they're not sitting there all day with I, you know, they're definitely supporting their education 100% and knowing, having been lucky enough to see a lot of the apps from them coming home during COVID, mm -hmm. um, I can say that, you know, it's definitely not, and not where a, like my kids don't have their own devices or anything in my house. And I think that these are incredible educational tools for them to be able to utilize from what I've seen. Again, just on here. And we did have a motion, correct, and a second. Sounds like we are ready for both. All those in favor? She's the secretary of the board. Opposed? Okay, I think you we know, just need time to read it somehow. In, in to kind of, because there were questions I had, though. I was reading it on the computer, but. Were you? I was going to pass it. Yeah. Maybe we need to look at so, it because some people had hands up and there's. Then, Hold oh, on. I didn't hear somebody move it to it. I mean, there's still some questions about because it says in here if the superintendent isn't able to do certain things, then you have an agent. Who would be the agent that would do that in that case? So, so 
So you want time to read it? Just time to read it so that yep. you understand it okay. so then we can come back and ask those questions. Yeah. 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 I know it's got time sensitive, sure. but That's fine. Well, it came, yes, it, it did get sent out. Yeah. It, 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 it did. It's just, it's, just, it's, just, it's, it's, just, it's, mm -hmm. it's time to digest. Yeah. And I'm better with paper yeah. than I am with computer. So. It's, Right now, like I mean, I think it's right now. Right right so go ahead and read. Right. Yeah, what what can, absolutely. Can totally. What what can we try to answer for you? Like in that case of um, the agent, what paragraph? What page? Okay, so does it, does it, the superintendent that the superintendent and other appropriate officials of the district acting singularly are authorized mm -hmm. to and empowered in its name and on its behalf to do or cause to do such other acts and things as may be necessary or desirable in order to affect the sale and delivery of the lease. I mean, who, I don't know what number. Nine, number nine, that's number okay. nine. So appropriate officials of the district um, to do and cause all such other things that may be necessary to, to affect the sale and delivery of the lease and the escrow agreement. So for example, Audra is the secretary of this corporation, so she mm -hmm. has final signature. But I am out there working with the bankers and the lawyers to get this document done. You have your technology group who is out there getting bids, procuring equipment, tagging it, inventorying it. You have people throughout that are part of this process. Mm -hmm. um, so this is, this is giving us basically the authority to act on behalf of the district to affect this lease. And as far as the escrow, what does that mean? I mean, I know um, so escrow what happens, but I want to know what happens. So what happens it. is um, this lease will be, will have an official date of October 31st. Mm -hmm. And what happens is the bank funds it and it puts the 457000 into an account on our behalf, like, an, um, mm -hmm. like an escrow you would see with your house or something, right? It's in a separate account. And as invoices get paid, they use those funds to pay the invoices. So that's what that's what the escrow is. It's a, it's an amount. It's this money set aside for us at the bank. Okay. So it's set aside. So it's something that was budgeted. Mm -hmm. But we don't necessarily we don't necessarily have all those funds expended for something. They're not like we already have. We do have, have to have a list for them. So that's, we did have to have. That's mm -hmm. right. So we, we had to. We're buying X number of Chromebooks. We're going to do X number of iPad. We're going to. We have some of our e-rate projects, so we had a huge technology project that in access points and I'm wireless sure. access <clears throat> points of software um, to support that switches, which are required to make Wi-Fi. So work. what happens is we get federal what's called e-rate money, and it you have to have certain projects that qualify, and you submit a project, and the e-rate pays for a certain percentage of that project, and the district is responsible for the balance. And so this lease is covering some of the portion of our balance. So in what you said about this being a three year, but you think yes. next year we're gonna do another one of those another three years? So this is well, so this is a three year. This means we're buying all of the items that we needed for the current fiscal year. So we're purchasing it all now. We're paying it back over three years. Um, as we do the budget for fiscal 25, which is coming up shortly, um, we will again have this question. What do we what do we need? How are we going to pay for it? Mm -hmm. Could you talk a little bit about the device cycle that you have um, mm -hmm. in place? Yeah. Do you want to know top to bottom student okay. devices? How old are they when they are replaced? iPads and Chromebooks. So that's changed a little bit post COVID. Um, the accessibility we have to parts and repairing the devices ourselves, uh, which is what we did historically. We had uh, on site technicians. Um, if you go back 10 years ago, we actually had three repair technicians for the district. Mm -hmm. We've reduced that down to one role now. We have one repair technician located at the high school. Um, we use the inner office mail system throughout the district to um, get broken devices back and forth to that repair position. Um, the ability for us to get parts, though, since COVID has been a huge problem um, and get those parts at an affordable rate. So. That's been a big deal. Um, charging families for repairs, that's changed in the last five to 10 years. 
Uh, we only charge for malicious damage now. We don't charge for all damage. We used to give every family um, one free screen breakage, right? Screens are now, you know, $300 a pop to repair. It, it's just, it's insane. So we're now on a, this is our first year of this. We're on a three-year cycle with Chromebooks, which we're getting roughly um, around $300 a piece. And then we also do a three-year ADP, accidental protection damage plan with those, so that anything that happens to those, we ship them out for free, we get the repairs done for free, no cost to the families, we don't need extra repair guys, we're not, you know what I mean, trying to deal with all these vendors and the crazy expensive repairs. So we're trying this three-year cycle with the Chromebooks. Um, What's the cost of the uh, three-year repair uh, So the total cost with the device is $442, is what I have here. Um, the iPads, we're on a four-year cycle. Uh, the iPad with the ADP is 459 so pretty similar to the Chromebook. Uh, we said earlier the iPads are K3, Chromebooks are 4 through 12. Um, the staff cycle, uh, we moved to MacBooks during COVID. We are hopefully in FY25 going to start cycling some of those devices out. Um, and we're trying to make the MacBooks a, I think we said, five-year rotation. That's coming up this year, though, so I don't have that number fresh in my head. This will be the first time that we start to cycle some of those out. Um, one of the reasons that we do the cycle is, again, so that we have that sort of flat, consistent budget every year for the taxpayers, and then we don't see these giant spikes where, hey, in this one year, we're going to go buy 3,000 new devices to cover every device we have in the district, right? Because that's just absurd money in one year. We also get support for our devices from from the main Milty program, which is um, an initiative by the DOE to support devices in the schools. So not all of our device cost is incurred by the district. Our, our rotation also it also includes our phone rotations, our projector rotations, um, our network, our, ne our network that we just redid. It was uh, it's been five years since we redid that, and it was a much needed change. So we are really our goal is to keep costs minimal and consistent. So we're, we look at the most at, at um, the the life of the device and repair costs versus you know. So we um, we always get asked like, well, why don't we stretch it a little bit longer? Because then repair costs and availability for parts just makes um, that a nightmare. And nothing is worse than a teacher in a classroom with twenty kids with a device that doesn't work. It is so stressful. And then um, we we've lost an educational moment, and not just a moment. It's a it's a real drain on an educational resource that could be a really effective 15 minutes of a day. Yeah, I'm just, the, the, the numbers are, for me, they're just, they, I hate to say the word unsustainable, but with technology, you're absolutely right. Everything is more expensive, you know, and, and I understand wanting to go to three years, you know, on an iPad, I think you said four years, if I'm not mistaken, right? You know, I, you know my, own, my own MacBook Pro currently is, I think, six years old, you know, and, and I'm still using it, and I'm going to use it, you know, I care for it, it's, it's my personal device, right? Um, you know, I get the, the uh, we're trying to hit that sweet spot, mm -hmm. right? Just financially, I mean, half a million dollars a year spent out over three years, so it, it just, it's a lot, and I truly I understand, I respect the way you've eliminated software at $200,000, and you have a plan in place, like, that stuff is all awesome, I'm, I'm singing your praises, I understand that's budgeted, but I mean, I, the reason why I was put in this place is people said, get control of the budget. That was, that was the number one reason, right? And, and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sitting here yeah. with the authority to say, like, yeah, half a million dollars? Like, there's, got, there's got to be some other sweet spot. We've got to relook mm -hmm. at things. This has got to come down so that we're, we're not in the spot. I, I can't go back to the, my constituents, the people who asked me to be here and hold a hard line and say, yeah, I, I, I did what was right. I, I, can't, I understand. I understand the process has gone in, but that's the spot I'm in. It's also an opportunity cost. If we didn't have computers, we would need other materials and resources. We can't just have nothing. And t I don't, textbook cost is astronomical. Absolutely. So yeah. I, we ha what we have is something that can be com continually renewed with the latest resources. Without that additional instructional material cost, we reduce copy costs. So it is, it is a big, unquestionably big part of our enormous budget. 
So when you look at a half a million dollar piece of our $40 million budget that is for an effective instructional supply that covers a lot of bases and communication for all of our staff and students, it's, I mean, it's, a, it's not the cost of doing business. It's become the cost of doing business. It has become. But we're not going backwards. Right. But I'm asking, <coughs> where's the balance, right? Yeah. If that's when we, we grapple with that. Then, then what's the, the offsetting costs, right? And, and that's not clear to me. I don't have that information to give right. to my constituents. If this is going up, great. Tell me what we've dropped by half a million dollars. I heard we've eliminated two positions. That makes sense. But that's not half a million dollars, right? Like, give me the offset. Give me the offset so I can go back and I can say, yes, I did this, but this is the offset. We're still good. I don't have Mm -hmm. But we can give you that, Josh. You can give me Yeah, I think we can. I mean, we talk about two positions. We talk about $200,000 worth of software. Um, two positions is close to $150,000, $200,000, what you think about benefits and all that kind of stuff. So we're close to your half a million dollars. There's definitely this, again, we don't do this just because it's easy to like, oh, let's just spend money. This is about what is the best what what is the best bang for our buck, and how do we how do we measure this out, and what's best for our, our students as best we can? Um, so yeah, we, we can do that. This is this is not a this is not an easy time for anybody. So we'll so the backup is there. What my I get where you're at. I also feel like we've made some commitments that we need to to like stand up on and take care of what we've done, which is in terms of this leases and the fact that we've. At least we're part of our budget process, and we need to agree to that and and stand by what we said we were going to do. That's a part of it too. So, but going forward, we we'll, we can like we will do that. We have all that data when we do budgeting. It isn't it isn't pie in the sky, guys. We don't just do everything just because juice. We want to spend money. It's okay. How do we do this in a way that's going to be the most beneficial for for the students and for our public as best we can? So we will provide those data and that backup for you. But this and this this specific expenditure was vetted through the yes. budget yes. process. Yes, vetted through so the budget process. Talking about yeah. already the opportunity yes. to yeah. have input. Yeah. And the questions could may not have been asked uh, because, to be honest with you guys, you weren't here. <laughs> like nobody was attending. Nobody was asking those questions. We are happy to have you here. It's not a bad thing to have people asking questions. It's the question of um, being open. To the to the to the conversation, yeah, and hearing, and being able to say, okay, some of this is some of this is actually something we can't necessarily um, fight with, but how do we try to make things better and move forward? And, and we've had you know conversations just yeah. talking just big about budget, right? Mm -hmm. Is you know what I feel is appropriate is a three percent increase per year. Mm -hmm. I think that that's a just a roundabout figure yeah. um, based on historical averages. Mm -hmm. You know, we were at five percent. So in this spring cycle, we come in budget. Am I expecting a one percent to get to a three-year average? You know, like at some point, we've got to have the hard, very uncomfortable mm -hmm. conversations to say budget is really important. I mean, mm -hmm. I drive by the Marion School on a regular basis on Monday. Around, if you go there at two thirty, mm -hmm. there's a line that's a half a mile long because people can't afford grocery bills, right? They, they right? They have to prove it, right? And this there. That's an hour before they even open, and it's, and it's a quarter mile long, yeah. right? I mean, it should be, it shouldn't be exaggerated to say half a mile. It's a quarter it's, mile long, It's right? long enough. It's it is very long, right? For sure. yeah. And they're there for an hour before it opens to make sure mm -hmm. that they get food, right? And, and, and there's an offset with taxes. Mm -hmm. like, and I'm not saying we can solve all issues through our school budget. Right. I'm not saying that. I'm right. not making that claim at all. Right? There's, yeah, I am saying, is... like, I am willing, I was asked mm -hmm. to come here to at least ask those difficult right. questions, those hard questions. I know when it goes back to the main school board association, I read it. We, we give them $15,000 a year. Mm -hmm. I don't know that we get the return on investment of $15,000 a year to the main school board association, knowing that it's a partisan organization, mm -hmm. right? It, like we, got, we have to have these conversations yeah. in the yeah. open yeah. so that, so that it's not about I, I don't I don't think you or anyone prior to me was underhanded at all. I don't believe that. We've got numbers that are really, really high, right? And and we've gotta say that publicly. They're really, really high, and our academics don't match our high numbers. That's a fact we have to admit and own. And I think we can have some mm -hmm. discussions down the road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Questions answered. They're coming. Mm -hmm. It's good. We do have to kind of settle on this I tonight. Agree. So I agree. we had the motion. Mm -hmm. 
We had it seconded? Had discussion. Had discussion, questions or answers? All in favor? I will support you this time. <laughs> yeah. I, and I think and I don't think they have time to count, so opposed. Was was that were you opposed? Okay, okay, okay. Excellent. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Thank you. 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 You don't have a new equipment challenge to share. Except for Buster. Okay. Other. Another? 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 It's timely, but um, it came to us just this week. So I just want to put this out that you guys don't have any of this information in front of you. Um, we are currently in a school um, revolving renovation fund cycle. So we, apt, we have um, received some funds to work on the HVAC systems um, ventilation piece. It's happening right now in the district. Um, so that's been great. Um, the work's been done at um, Huzzy School. And some work at the high school, a little bit at the middle school. Middle school, a little bit middle school. Um, we have just, we've been talking only recently, but there is another round of the school revolving renovation funds that are available to us to apply for, um, which would, and the priorities um, for this one is um, again priority one, which is the health and safety areas, which is again ventilation. Um, HVAC systems, um, building temperature controls, and um, kind of coming into compliance with um, LD705, which is a ventilation and air requirement, which is part of that. So what I'm asking tonight as we look through this, what, what I have in front of you is just a timeline. Um, the grant application, um, just that initial we're interested, needs to go in on October 31st of this coming like month, week right yes yeah. right now <laughs> which is why I'm sitting in front of you going you know this is short short notice and I just want to talk about it a little bit um, the approval from the Department of Ed doesn't come till March and then if we were actually chosen to be um, a, a recipient of the app of the the grant um, we would need to bring it to the school board for their approval um, in March of 2024 so that's March 15th um, beyond that, if we are approved and the main bang bank, main bond bank <laughs> approves us, that's in May. Um, the project bids go in in May 24, so it's like it's an ongoing process and nothing actually gets started until September of 2025. So just, it's a long term piece in front of us. What, I'm, what I would like to talk with you about tonight, whether you're willing to do this, is to just allow us to make the application to the to the um, school revolving renovation fund so that we could access the funds that are being put aside. There's approximately, we're talking with Don Brejnahan today, who is sort of our connection, and he's the he is our, he's, he's overseeing the projects that are currently going. Um, he's actually gonna come in and see the board in, I think we're looking at like late um, December, to just give an update of what the projects that we've been doing now and then talk about the future if we decide that that's what we want to do. Um, so he, he'll be in front of you. But um, I think they have gone from really nothing in the in the in the SRF, SRRF funds in the past um, kind of COVID time years. They went in this year to how much? I think it, it had been around 10 million in the state. Yeah. And it's gone to 25 million. Yeah. Because there's a, there are many, many schools, districts that are looking to upgrade their um, facilities because it hasn't been. Do we have any specific projects in mind? Yeah, there are actually, um, if you look below to the scope of the work, um, it would be the ventilation. It would be looking at the other buildings that have not been touched at this point. So we're looking at Northbrook Elementary School, um, Mary Heard, all of them, Hanson. And um, we'll be looking at Lebanon Elementary School. <laughs> We're going to do that. Um, and whatever's left at the, the, the middle school piece should be almost completed. 
and I will I need to check in honestly I don't know the details of the high school what needs to be done but so those are the same types of projects mm -hmm. the ventilation projects HVAC that, that piece so our um, request is for us to just discuss tonight whether or not this is an application that you would even like us to make um, and again we do not have to accept the funds if we choose to make the application and we are actually um, picked as a, uh, a project. Um, but if we don't make the application, we won't even have the option to say yes to that. So is this free money or is this? It's never free money. Yeah. But it is, um, <laughs> well, there's no. It's 50% free. So, yeah, it's 50% free. Yeah. What do you want to talk about it a little bit? Yeah, yeah just um, the yeah. way that the, this revolving renovation fund works is there is a certain limit. Uh, you can only be awarded up to $2 million per school building every five years. So they kind of take a rolling five-year look and see what they would award you at any particular building. Um, let's see, what else was I supposed so to? So 50% is a grant and oh, 50 is a bond? So what they do is they take your um, state subsidy percentage. So if the state reimburses us 51%, they take 51% of the total cost of the project and the state pays for it. The, the other 49% would be paid by the district at 0% interest. So they allow us to spread it, and depending on the project, it can go from 10 years to 20 years, I think. Uh, it may have increased to 25, but I think it depends on the project. Um, and so that's the, that's the draw, yeah. right? The state is paying half of a project that needs to be done, and our portion has no interest and is spread over years. So that's, that's why it can be an attractive option. You know, it's not something that we're required to do, but um, these funds are not always available. Historically, the state hasn't been consistent with how they offer these funds. These are projects on our list. But anyway, we have to go out and like, find things to... No, no, okay. there's no... Uh, so it's helping. The buildings you mentioned, are they the ones that are currently not in compliance with the main... LD LD yeah. So, so we're in the process of, it, with the work that we're doing right now, bringing everybody up to speed. Um, I don't know that we. I would say to you, Josh, that I wouldn't say that we are like hugely out of compliance because we do. We've done. We we work really hard over the, you know, just to keep the buildings in terms of ventilation stuff up to speed. But for instance, um, Northburg Elementary School today, um, we have rooms that are really really warm. And then we have other rooms that so that there's some differentiation in, in the buildings that we're trying to address. Yeah, so things like that. Um, the piece that I guess that it's important though, recognizing that state money is also taxpayer money and it ends up you know hitting you. But the reality is is they're going to give this money to somebody. <laughs> and so the question is is do we do we put our put our hat in the ring to be able to access those or do we not? Because it, it is. It is going to go to someone. I don't think how much longer have during at this point because we can deny it later on. If it, we're correct. To get our budget exactly. Right. Um, so we do it with. Um, so the central office writes it with um, the, the folks that are typically the um, Bridgeland is the gentleman that, that helped us with this last one. Um, so you put it out to bid to get the right. We have these. These are all big. So you're paying a grant writer too. No. No. Oh. He just he just provides good information. We write these ourselves. But okay. what I'm saying is, is that the information, I don't know HVA systems, so we make sure that we have the, <laughs> I don't know a lot of stuff. Um, anyway, so we make sure that we have the, the expertise. So, and these are things that we were looking at anyway. These, these are things that are, it's just yeah. as, as you look at your capital program, you know, um, program, we definitely are always looking to maintain the best in terms of the sure. So we do it a little early with a little help. Potentially. 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 So Potentially. If, if we make the application and get approved, and then if we decide we don't want to do it, do we get like penalized? No. No. Never get a No, no. Somebody else is happy. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. There's always, they're always going to be accepting probably like a second tier. Mm -hmm. So if oh. we chose to not utilize the funds, then the, a ne a, the next tier would be somebody to take care of So even though we're spending kids to the level in elementary school, we're mm -hmm. not going to put that in that I would grant. suggest, this is me, that we not spend money in Lebanon Elementary if we're looking at actually 
you know, closing that building down or something. For our plans, right? Mm -hmm. plans yeah. for, exactly. I don't think that's good money to go well, in that direction. That probably would cost more in that building than any other building yeah. to bring it up to. That building right. is, is yeah. very much not going to come up to speed. Mm -hmm. use it yourself. Mm -hmm. So that would be, uh, again, those are, there's big conversations to be had about, like, um, either you know, moving forward in some sort of a building project in Lebanon only <coughs> that would address <coughs> the whole the whole kit and Okay. Yeah. Would this include air conditioning at all? Or just mostly I I think um, so there are some aspects of um, air conditioning that have been inserted into some of the um, like at the Hussey School there was an area that because it was sweltering 110 in some of the rooms. Um, but it's all individual based on like each of the buildings is looked at individually just one thing. Okay. The reality too though is we have summer school in every every building. Um, and so air conditioning is not really a bad environmental aspect, but we can talk about electricity is going up four for the we had a lot of discussion it sounded like we mm -hmm. need to go forward with, do we want to do a motion well, forward? I, I would actually, like a motion just like to motion. state that it's okay for us to then sign off on the application the, process. I second. Okay. All in favor of going through? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other, other public input? On this um, proposal for um, each HVAC, Mm -hmm. Is that fall under uh, efficient, uh, efficiency made? Um, the current one does. Yeah, so, so we so do on. have in our our project that we're doing right now, we do have some efficiency projects that qualify. Some of the projects qualify, some of them don't. It depends on what efficiency Maine is currently giving us money for. But that is something that they definitely take into account when they when they propose the cost and all of that. So what do you have to give up for that? Um, we just heard at a meeting that efficiency Maine's given money to heat pumps, but you got to disconnect your furnace. Oh, uh, um, we no, like that's uh, they don't. They're so excited yeah, to work with us. <laughs> they have never asked us to actually give up anything. And you so. talk about air conditioning. Um, you know, we went to school with kids and. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, that's the way it was, and sure. um, I think it's, it's where energy is going up, yeah, and, uh, you know, we're talking a depression coming, yeah. and uh, these people aren't going to be able to afford the school budget, so I think it's time to really take a hard look at mm -hmm. the cost of doing business, and what are the kids getting out of it? I mean, the SAT scores, I mean, the scores are down. Issue, so and any other public input? Yeah, Mark Cahoon from Alberta. I had a uh, suggestion. Uh, they are offering on solar panels. Now, I know for a fact that I suggested at my own company I work at, you put solar panels on the roof to help with the lighting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Have you looked in? There's special funding for it. They're offering the state funding free putting solar panels up to cut down some of your energy costs. Yeah, uh, we're not supposed to answer questions, but I can tell you we have been, we have been working solar. on that, a solar piece of it, yes, yeah. If you can put solar over, over at Mobile Home, mm -hmm. you got, I'm sure you've got an athletic field that is not being used. That you I think can, we can put them on the roof up there, Mark, to be honest yeah. with you. It's a flat roof. Yeah, but there's, put them on there's the roof, thing, yeah. and it might cut down some some of the heat in the summertime or the, the early spring with them panels moving to follow the sun and it won't be so hot in the schools. You know, solar will cut down your lighting, it will aid and cut down on your electricity costs. Not that I'm for solar because I've been on the planning board and fighting against these commercial fields, uh, but in order for small areas in the schools, that be the way to go. And I'm sure there's, I've seen they're looking to get solar introduced and you can find some way to get it funded yeah. cheaply. Thank you. Yeah. Other public input? Uh, one thing bothered me tonight, and I wanted to tell all you folks, 
Thank you for listening to me. Man, I learned a lot tonight, but one thing bothering me. I served my country for 22 years, and that flag is very obscure. I hope it's I, not like I that. Agree. I agree. <laughs> I agree. I still don't know where it is. Oh, but it's, it's not, not like it's the same as it's, it's a, a, it's a, it's a uh, skylight. Yes. Yeah, so it's not a shrine. Oh, you know, the flags. Yeah. I mean, uh, just a reasonable request. Yeah. I'd love all flags to be able to be seen as soon as I enter the room. Yeah. Like uh, every room on yeah. American flag, yeah. is oh, we can give us this right to be here for for our veterans. I mean, people coming in. I mean, that's and, and we important. did find it before the pledge. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. No. Understood. Though. Yeah. Other public. Uh, I know you don't answer specific questions right now, Kelly Willard, North Berwick. Um, at a later date or online, is it possible for me to get a copy of that PDIS presentation that they put on? It'll be actually in the minutes that will be up on. The website, yep, it's, I actually just put a link into it so you'll okay. be able to see it. Yep. Perfect. Sure. Other public input? Motion to adjourn. So moved. So second? Yep. All in favor? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks,